Now let's talk about the various bony features of the bone. Beginning with the upper end. The upper end has a concave part, which is the head. It has a constricted part, the neck. And finally, the third part is the radial tuberosity that is in its medial part. The upper part is concave because it has to articulate and form an elbow joint with the capitulum of the humerus that we studied in the humerus, if you remember. And secondly, the uh, circumference of the head also is articular as it has to form the radio, superior radio ulnar joint and giving attachment to the annular ligament. While the neck is constricted and the radial tuberosity is a prominent protrusion in the medial part or upper part of the medial border of the bone which is included in its upper end and its anterior margin is soft while posterior margin is a little rough. Moving on let's talk about the shaft. The shaft has three borders and three surfaces. First border that we are very familiar with is the medial border and then we have the anterior border. The anterior border extends from the anterior margin of the radial, radial tuberosity all the way goes down all the way a little laterally towards the styloid process towards the styloid process this anterior uh, border is characterized in its upper part as it is oblique in the upper part in the upper part it is known as the anterior oblique line while the lower part of the anterior border is crest like moving on posterior border is a mirror image of the anterior border the posterior border is very ill defined you can see it right here and also it is a mirror image of the anterior border hence it also has a posterior oblique line after which is which it is straight in most of its path so what are the surfaces that are formed due to these borders the first surface is the surface between the anterior border and the medial border known as the anterior surface this surface contains the nutrient foramen in its upper part the surface between the medial border and the posterior border is known as the posterior surface. And finally, between the anterior border and the posterior border, we have this surface. It is known as the lateral surface of the radius, which is very important because all radius being the lateral bone of the forearm has a lateral surface uh, dedicated to its entire cells. So now we know the various borders and surfaces. Let's talk about the lower end. Now, as you can see, the lower end has an anterior part in the lower end is a little thick and prominent. This is because the radial artery passes in front of it. And normally when a person, when you take pulse as a doctor uh, of patients, you take it against pushing the artery against this prominent ridge. Secondly, posteriorly, there is there are, there are grooves. These grooves are basically for the various extensor tendons. And just in the middle of these grooves, is the dorsal tubercle of Lister. Moreover, the lateral part of this lower end is prolonged a little be be below the rest of the bone, as you can see. This is the styloid process. It lies laterally. And finally, you can see that the, inf and just inferiorly, you can see that this is a whole triangular area which has to articulate with the various uh, wrist bones. Medially in the lower end is the ulnar notch, which is uh, for the articulation with the head of the ulna. So that's all about the bony features of the radius. Thank you for watching. In the next video, we will talk about the muscle attachments.